Hello everyone, my name is Silver Willowing and welcome. Today we're going to talk about something I'm pretty sure has been on a lot of people's mind after we got the trailer for How to Train Your Dragon 3 The Hidden World. And that is of course the question of whether Toothless and the Light Fury are going to have offspring or make babies so to speak. Uh, and a lot of people have been looking forward to seeing that little Night Fury slash Light Fury baby showing up in the film, but we really don't know much about it yet. And that raises the question, is it even possible for two different species to create an offspring that is healthy and functioning? And in this case a little dragon baby, a little toothless child. So it has been confirmed that the Night Fury and the Light Fury are two unique species. They have several differences in their appearance and behavior as well. One of the most prominent ones being that they are completely different colors, the amount of ears that the Light Fury have compared to what Toothless has. And she doesn't have spikes, she doesn't have any spikes at all all over her body. And she has an overall completely smooth design and a completely different kind of shape of her wings and her flaps on her tail as well. She looks overall very, very different but still with the same kind of body, uh, like they are made of the same general species but then they are subspecies of that species. So we have to go ahead and think how related are these two dragons in order to be able to create children and, and kids and I don't know what you're supposed to call that, hatchlings maybe, uh, to produce eggs together. So in order to be able to answer this question as scientifically as possible, we should go ahead and look at some real life examples of hybrids. One of the most famous hybrids of the world is the Liger and the Tigon. These animals are a mix between a tiger and a lion. The Ligers are a result of a male lion mating with a tigress. The Ligers are the largest felines in the entire world, however they are completely artificial. Tigers and lions would never meet in the wild since they generally live on different continents and they would just never cross territories and have the opportunity to mate with each other. The Ligers are not very healthy animals since they are so big and they have a kind of mixed instinct pool going on because the tigers and lions are so different, they have such different lives. So the Liger is a very confused animal. Regardless of that, the Liger is a living, breathing hybrid with an average lifespan of 14 years. The Tigers are almost similar to the Liger, the difference being that the father is a tiger rather than the mother. So a Tigon is a hybrid between a male tiger and a lioness. The Tigons are often very much smaller than both of their parents and especially the Liger as well and they tend to look more like tigers rather than lions. So how is it possible for a lion and a tiger to breed? These are different species who live in completely different environments but still they can come together and create offspring. It all comes down to DNA. I'm sure most of you are familiar with DNA. To describe it as simple as possible, DNA is like a manual on how an organism is supposed to work, look and act. It's a string of atoms that forms a code of genetic instructions on how to create a living organism. While tigers and lions are different species, they come from the same branch of the feline family tree and they share the same genus which is Panthera. Without complicating that too much, it simply means that the DNA of these two animals are similar enough for the father's sperm to successfully fertilize the mother's egg cell because they share the same DNA count and therefore they fall into place. And thus a Liger is born, or a Tigon. However, both tigers and lions and all felines are mammals, so it doesn't really directly translate to our situation with Toothless and the Light Fury, does it now? Another famous hybrid is the mule, which is an interbreeding between a horse and a donkey. Some of the most well-known hybrids, as it turns out, are mammals. This is also the case with the Wolfin, one of the more rare hybrids of the world. The Wolfin is a crossbreeding between a male false killer whale and a female bottlenose dolphin. Wolfin is a highly functioning hybrid that has even been able to breed with bottlenose dolphins and create offspring. Several bird species have also been known to interbreed. An example of this is the Mullard, which is a hybrid between a pecking duck and a muskery duck. 
So now we have taken a look at both mammals and birds. So we should probably move on to something that's a little bit closer to a night fury and a light fury, which of course is reptiles. Reptile hybrids are a lot rarer than any of the other hybrids I have mentioned. However, they are possible. The largest living reptiles today are the alligators and the crocodile species. And you might think that because they look so similar, they would be able to breed and create eggs and eventually offspring. But that's actually not true. Alligators and crocodiles are not able to breed and are not able to create hybrids because their DNA is so different on the inside. So while alligators and crocodiles look similar when we look at them, they are completely different animals when you take a look at their DNA. A hybrid that has been recorded, however, is a mix between a Cuban crocodile and an American crocodile. A hybrid that has proven to be much more resilient than both of its parents. These animals are once again able to breed because they share the same genus, which is Crocodilus. So it has become clear to us that in order for animals to be able to breed, they need to share the same genus family. In other words, have very similar DNA. So let's go back and take a look at Toothless and the Light Fury. While it is impossible for us to do a DNA test of a fictional creature, it has been confirmed that these two species are very closely related. It's been confirmed that the Light Fury is a subspecies of the Night Fury, or the other way around, the Toothless is in fact the subspecies. Regardless, they are related. But are they close enough to be of the same genus family? If we imagine the Fury name as being the genus of these dragons, then it is quite likely that they indeed share the very same. And they most certainly would be able to breed. After all, we don't know how many of Toothless kind is out there. There might be hundreds of different Fury subspecies that have all adapted to different environments, but still share that same genus name. As it stands now, the possibility of a light fury and the night fury coming together successfully made the female carry offspring and eventually give birth is very likely because these dragons are very similar in appearance. They have the overall same bone structure, the overall same skull, the same eyes. They share a lot of similarities to each other, similar to a horse and a donkey or a tiger and a lion. While there haven't been many reptiles hybrids encountered in the real world, it doesn't make it any less possible. We have the scientific knowledge to confirm that several reptile species would indeed be able to interbreed. As an example, let's take a look at the genus Varanus, a species of reptiles known as monitors that have a very, very large family of many, many different species. In fact, a Nile monitor would be able to breed with a Komodo dragon, even though these species never meet in the wild or have ever been introduced to each other anywhere else, they are technically, scientifically able to reproduce because they share the same DNA and the same genus family. Speaking of Komodo dragons, did you know that Komodo dragons are actually able to reproduce asexually? This means that the female is able to create offspring all on her own without receiving any sperm from a male Komodo dragon. This normally occurs in captivity when a female is kept alone. In the wild these dragons have been known to breed, but they can pretty much do both. Some snakes and other monitors are also able to do this. And this opens up a whole new option for us to explore, if the light fury is able to reproduce in this way as well. However, I don't think it will go very well with the overall aesthetic of Toothless and the light fury being together and the entire romance aspect around them. I find it much more likely that they are gonna fall in love. And from that love, create an egg. Which is good news if you were looking forward to seeing Toothless father a baby dragon. We still have no idea what direction the movie is gonna take this romance to, but it's definitely to be confirmed that there is gonna be a romance. I mean, just listen to Astrid. Toothless has a girlfriend. It's pretty obvious that the movie wants some romance elements to go on between these two dragons. 
but how far it's going to develop we don't know yet so we'll have to wait until more information comes out but now we got the scientific aspect of it cleared up and it is most likely possible for them to create baby light slash night fear babies what would they be called i wonder if you have a suggestion for that feel free to leave that in the comment section a hybrid between a night fear and a light fury what would the name be that's pretty interesting to think about i hope you enjoyed this video and it gave you some insight on some scientific aspect of a fictional movie and i hope that i will see you again in my next video so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. So long, Dragon Riders!